Welcome to Veteran Safe Place. My name is Scott Swanstrom, and this segment is brought to you by The Firewatch. That is Florida's fight to end veteran suicide. And today we have another opportunity to celebrate a uh, Veteran Safe Place. And uh, here representing Operation New Uniform, we have Elise Prescott. Thank you for joining us today. Yeah, thank you for having me. Absolutely. So tell us a little bit about Operation New Uniform. Yeah, Operation New Uniform is a nonprofit. We're <laughs> headquartered here in Jacksonville, um, but we're serving veterans, uh, military members, and families all across the country. Um, really, our mission is to support military members, veterans, and spouses with a smooth transition out of the military and into really meaningful careers. Excellent. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, what a crucial need. Uh, can yes. you tell me a little bit? about how uh, you have seen that make such an impact on others' lives. We know we're trying to reduce veteran suicide, mm -hmm. and sometimes finding a job and uh, attaining job skills can be really difficult and add to that crisis. Uh, yeah. So can you expound a little bit on that? Yeah, definitely. Um, so there is, unfortunately, a link between unemployment and veteran suicide. Um, we see it uh, with all of our classes. Just um, being unemployed can cause a lot of stress on a veteran, mm. having them um, really worried about how they're going to provide for their family. Uh, it can be really daunting taking all of the skills you've learned in the military and being able to articulate that and translate that into the civilian career force. Um, if they've been in the military for however long, but especially when they've been in for 20 years, that's kind of a whole different language, a whole different way of life. So really being able to help them articulate that over to getting that meaningful career. Mm -hmm. So once they're in that meaningful career that has that purpose for them, they can start to uh, internally heal and really focus on all aspects of their life once they're just secure in that position. Okay. Excellent. Very mm -hmm. good. So what are some of the things that Operation New Hope or uh, New Uniform, pardon mm -hmm. me, offer? Yeah, definitely. So we, um, for our veterans, we offer a two and a half week program uh, that's all focused on career professional development. Um, we offer it here live in Jacksonville and then also live down in Tampa. We've expanded down there. And But really the two and a half weeks focuses on getting your beha behaviors, attitudes, and techniques ready for that successful career. So first figuring out I would say majority of veterans and even spouses that come to us, that big daunting question of what do you want to do with the rest of your life? A lot of them say, I don't know. Yeah. So really focusing and helping uh, consult them and guiding them to figure out this is kind of the career field that I want to go into and having them realize that even though they maybe did security in the military, that's not exactly what you have to do out in um, this workforce. So first kind of figuring out what exactly they want to do and then teaching them all those techniques to get there. So how to network, doing their 30 second commercial, star stories, um, upfront contracts, all those uh, resumes, all the things they haven't had to think about in the military now going to get that uh, new career. So helping them with all that and then really getting them networked. Uh, everyone knows who's out in the workforce that networking is really key. Mm -hmm. um, and so our network becomes their network. We go with them to networking events, kind of help make that a little more comfortable for them. Uh, and then we also are starting our spouse program. Actually, tonight is day one of that. Excellent. Um, yeah, so same thing, spouses. As a military spouse myself, I can definitely speak from experience. But spouses face huge underemployment and unemployment. Mm. Um, so really just helping spouses realize their worth and help give them those techniques to then get a career that's going to be meaningful that they can keep with them as they move as much as they need to. Wow. Yeah. Excellent. What a fantastic support yeah. and, and such a timely transition that, uh, you know, it really can bring about a lot of stress and yes. anxiety for yeah. our folks. And mm -hmm. uh, so you're just providing such a fantastic service on top of becoming a watch stander and becoming a veteran yeah. safe place and really providing that support to them on many different levels. Yeah. Um, so you've spoken a little bit from experience mm -hmm. as, as the spouse of mm -hmm. uh, someone who's active duty now. Uh, tell us a little bit about some of the challenges that you've seen uh, for those individuals shifting from a military lifestyle into a, a civilian lifestyle. Yeah, definitely. Um, so really just a lot of worry about how they're going to take all, everything they've done and per get that into a new career. Mm -hmm. um, we always ask our veterans day one kind of like what their biggest fear about the transition is. And majority of them really do say not being able to provide for their family because they've had that con mm -hmm. consistent paycheck, that um, very structured job for however long they've been in. So really that worry of if I don't get a job, then I can't provide for my family. 
and we have to make all these lifestyle changes mm -hmm. um, and being able to articulate that from the military into the civilian workforce. And we do something called the um, identity versus role theory. So when you're in the military, that kind of becomes your identity, mm -hmm. your rank, your uniform, your job. That's what everybody knows you by. So mm -hmm. then when you transition out, you shed that uniform. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times you also, a lot of people have problems shedding their identity with that. So just reminding them that their identity isn't made up of all these roles that they've had. They're mm -hmm. still them. They still have all this worth and potential going forward into the new career and really just helping them build that confidence back in to realizing that even though they're out of the military, they didn't lose their identity. Wow. Yeah. That's fantastic. That's yeah. so encouraging and it's very hope giving. Yeah. And so uh, we do want to thank you and, and just yeah. being able to highlight uh, Operation New Uniform. And thank mm -hmm. you for being here with us today, Elise. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. Well, thank you again for joining us for another episode of Veteran Safe Place. Uh, for more information in regards to the Firewatch, you can go to thefirewatch.org. There you can locate the Watchstander training as well as the Veteran Safe Place training. And we hope to see you soon. Thank you. At the Firewatch, we are on a mission to unite the local community with all active duty and veteran personnel to eliminate veteran suicide. As a result, we have created VetsEvents.org, an online resource focused on highlighting all of the great veteran military events in Northeast Florida. If you are a veteran support organization, uh, a business or a job fair looking to support, hire or celebrate the active and veteran community, uh, we encourage you to publish your event for free at vetsevents.org. So from there, the Firewatch will help market your event to all watchstanders, and you can be featured on Veteran TV. So here are a few upcoming events that we hope to see you at soon. We look forward to seeing you at these and many more events. To learn more about uh, how you can get involved and further support uh, these events and the Firewatch, visit thefirewatch.org. Another episode of Five Minute Salute. My name is Scott Swanstrom, your host for today, and uh, this episode is sponsored by the Firewatch. That is Florida's uh, efforts to end veteran suicide, and we have a chance to celebrate our veteran safe places and our watch standers in our community. And uh, we get to uh, just introduce you to Alex Vore with Trailer Bridge Incorporated. How are you doing today? I'm Alex? doing great. I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on. Absolutely. So uh, Trailer Bridge Incorporated is a veteran safe place. You've gone through the, the Watch Standard program with the Fire Watch. Uh, tell us a little bit about Trailer Bridge Incorporated. Sure. So Trailer Bridge has been around for about 31 years. We just celebrated a birthday. It was founded by a gentleman named Malcolm McLean, who was a pioneer in containerization in the logistics world. Um, our focus has always been back and forth to Puerto Rico. Um, with our own vessels doing Jones Act cargo back and forth. And recently we've ex expanded in the last five or six years or so into um, a logistics business, a nationwide logistics business. Um, and we also have international freight and uh, freight forwarding uh, op options for people. Um, our CEO is a guy named Mitch Luciano, who's been with us since about 2012. And he's made the place a remarkable place to work in terms of a very positive culture, so it's a great place to be. 
Excellent. Well, it's exciting to hear how Trailer Bridge is expanding and how you're, you're going deeper also. Uh, how have the, the virtues, the core values of uh, being part of the Firewatch, the Watch Standards program, and uh, Trailer Bridge, how have those aligned? Trailer Bridge has, uh, I mentioned the culture when I first uh, when we first started talking here, and, and Trailer Bridge has what they call the TB12, which is kind of like a, a set of principles about how we are. Mm -hmm. And uh, the principles uh, revolve around being good people um, and, and helping folks, and there's a tremendous amount of interest in that. So when I looked at what the watch standards were doing and recognized the type of people we had at Trailer Bridge, I thought it would be a great fit. And Mitch Grigg gave us the green light to participate, and so we did. And um, the program that the Firewatch offers is fantastic in terms of the training that's available, and it's valuable for those who know veterans who might be running into problems, but it's also just generally valuable for anybody uh, who might run into somebody who's contemplating suicide, which is a problem throughout all of society nowadays. And so it's, been, it's a great training program, and when people were going through it, and I was encouraging people to participate, I can't tell you how many folks came up to me and told me how much they enjoyed the training, how much they got out of it, and uh, how fantastic it was. But it really fits into our culture to participate in something like this because uh, we're interested in doing things that can help be helpful for people. Yeah, so absolutely. Yeah. Well, we want to thank you so much for what you're doing and for what Trailer Bridge Incorporated is doing in its community. Uh, I know you had a time to be able to serve in uniform. I did. Uh, tell us a little bit about your service and maybe uh, some of the challenges you challenges you recognized uh, going into civilian lifestyle. Sure. So I, I spent 25 years, a 25 year career in the Marine Corps. Um, retired uh, in 2013 and. Um, you know, came into the into the commercial world. Um, a lot of folks who retire end up in DOD contracting or those type things, which is kind of like old home week again. You know, everybody around you, you know. I took a little bit of a different path into the commercial world. I think um, for folks who are retiring, especially after career, one of the things that you really have to understand is you have to be a little bit humble mm -hmm. because you're making a, a change into an entirely different occupation where oftentimes you know, the value that you bring to it is is what you understand about the commercial world, and we really don't have that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, veterans bring a tremendous amount of leadership and management type experience to any situation that they're in. Mm -hmm. But you have to be humble enough and have to be able to roll up your sleeves and actually go to work and and, and get involved in doing those things and, and uh, try to add value wherever you can. Um, when you look around when you first get out and you see how organizations are designed, it feels very comfortable because there's a lot of parallels there. Mm -hmm. But the more time you spend away from the military, the more times you sometimes find that it's the small nuances that make all the difference. And one of the things that's terribly, terribly important is culture. Mm -hmm. And I didn't realize that until I came to Trailer Bridge, really. Um, because the Marine Corps has a culture that is so ubiquitous that I just took it for granted. It was very, very comfortable there. The, the couple places that I went um, afterwards had culture. One had a culture that was not good, and one had a culture that was, uh, it, was a, it was a culture that was just different. But uh, Trailer Bridge's culture is uh, something that they w really work on very, very hard, and uh, it's a very positive one. It's a great place to be. So Excellent. I'm very comfortable there. Let's put it that way. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Sounds like you found your right fit, and it has an amazing culture that's very uh, supportive. It is. Um, what uh, words of hope would you offer to a veteran or a veteran's family member who might be struggling with maybe a mental health challenge or even suicidal thoughts? Sure. You know, I, I think what I what you have to do is um, you have to. Uh, uh, try to get involved as much as you possibly can. Uh, there's not that whole kind of uh, peer group that you have around you. There's no one telling you what you're going to be doing and where, so you have to take the initiative and get involved yourself. But the more that you can try to get involved in your community, and perhaps that's either through a, whatever job you have or maybe even through some type of a faith faith-based community mm -hmm. or social opportunities. I think the more you can get involved and entwined, the better. The worst thing in the world to do is to try to, is to kind of withdraw in this mm -hmm. situation. But it's a serious transition because you go from something that dominates your life and all of a sudden that's kind of ripped away mm -hmm. and it's formed who you are. And all of a sudden you find out that you're out in, in a world where people don't necessarily understand that and appreciate that as much. Mm -hmm. You feel a little bit lost. I certainly understand those feelings. but. 
Uh, there's a lot of uh, great opportunity out there, and um, you just have to push yourself and have the discipline to, to put yourself out there and get involved. I think that helps a lot. Alex, what's one thing you're celebrating this week? Well, this week, yesterday was Anzac Day. Anzac is the uh, anniversary of the British and, and uh, Australian and French landings on the Gallipoli Peninsula. Oh, wow. Okay. So kind of an interesting and historic day. Important day for the Marine Corps because it helped found our amphibious doctrine. Wow. Yeah. Wow. A little bit of history there. Very Absolutely. Good. Well, thank you for sharing that. Well, thank you again for joining us for another five-minute salute. If you or your business are interested in becoming watch standers or a veteran safe place, I want to direct you to thefirewatch.org. There you can find a 30 to 45 minute uh, free training, and that training will help you to be able to identify veterans with risk factors and warning signs that might relate to suicidal thought, and uh, you might be able to direct them to those supports. If your business goes through this training, you'll be able to receive that Veteran Safe Place status sticker for your window, and uh, who knows, we might be able to have an interview with you uh, in future episodes, so thank you again. Florida Department of Veterans Affairs, we understand your journey, your commitment to honor. You are not alone. You served our families, now let us serve you. The FDVA will stop at nothing to provide the earned services, benefits, and support you deserve. Reach out to FDVA today. Our mission is you. Welcome home. At the Firewatch, we are on a mission to unite the local community with all active duty and veteran personnel to eliminate veteran suicide. As a result, we have created VetsEvents.org, an online resource focused on highlighting all of the great veteran military events in Northeast Florida. If you are a veteran support organization, uh, a business or a job fair looking to support, hire or celebrate the active and veteran community, uh, we encourage you to publish your event for free at vetsevents.org. So from there, the Firewatch will help market your event to all watchstanders, and you can be featured on Veteran TV. So here are a few upcoming events that we hope to see you at soon. We look forward to seeing you at these and many more events. To learn more about uh, how you can get involved and further support uh, these events and the Firewatch, visit thefirewatch.org. Welcome back to another segment of the Five Minute Salute. I am Scott Swanstrom, and this show is sponsored by the Firewatch, 
Florida's fight to end veteran suicide. And uh, our interview today is with Linda Ford from the Ford Firm, and uh, she is part of the Watch Standard program from the Firewatch. And so welcome today. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me, Scott. It's great to be here. Absolutely. So go ahead and tell us a little bit about the Ford Firm. Absolutely. So we are a full service CPA firm. We work with a lot of nonprofits, um, but we are full service. So we work with individuals and businesses as well. Excellent. So how does the Ford firm align with being a watch standard and the, the fire watch program? So I am a veteran from the Air Force. Um, I served a long time ago in Operation Desert Shield, Desert Storm. And it's very important to me that we support our military community. We have a lot of different um, avenues here for veterans, but I think in any community, it's important that we support our veterans. They put their lives on the line, literally, for all of us, yeah. and we need to we need to support that. We need to take care of them. Absolutely. What have been some of the challenges that you have seen when someone leaves active duty or the reserves and enters into the civilian lifestyle? I, th I think one of the biggest challenges is training. You know, yeah. in the military, we get a, a book and we study and we learn and you have to learn your specialty and take tests on it. When you go to get promoted, you take a test. So there's this constant training and learning. And when you get into the civilian world, it's here's your desk, here's your pens and pencils, go to work. Yeah. Uh, so you, you get kind of left behind because you don't have that training opportunity. Now, look, veterans can do anything. Yeah. I, I truly believe that. We've, we've all been through so many unique experiences that we can jump in and do things. But not having that training and that structure mm -hmm. can be terrifying. Yeah, absolutely. So maybe for a veteran and, and a veteran's family who might be experiencing some sort of crisis as it relates to maybe potential suicidal thoughts or, or mental health challenge that they're experiencing, what, what advice or what piece of hope would you offer to them? I think the hope that I would offer is that we are here to support you and we all want to see our veterans succeed. Nobody ever said, uh, we don't like our veterans, we don't want to support them. You know, we, we had some of that way back in Vietnam because people didn't understand what was going on. But I think even in our current divisiveness as a country, we all want to support our veterans and take care of them. So reach out. There is no shame in needing help. Absolutely. And I think, unfortunately, as veterans, you know, being in the military, there was a stigma with going to mental health, getting support. There is no shame in it. None. So reach out and get help, even if it's just reaching out to a fellow watch standard and saying, hey, I'm having a bad day. Absolutely. And, and we're here for you. It takes a certain kind of strength to seek out that help. There's it a bravery really that comes along with that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, Linda, thank you so much for being on the show today. And we really appreciate you being a part of the Watch Standard program. Uh, for those of you who are interested in becoming a watch stander or maybe your business and becoming a veteran safe place, I want to direct you to thefirewatch.org. There you'll find a free training that lasts about 30 to 45 minutes. And uh, you might be on this show as well as you join our family and community members of Veteran Safe Places. Thank you again. My name is Scott Swanstrom. At the Florida Department of Veterans Affairs, we understand your journey, your commitment to honor. You are not alone. You served our families, now let us serve you. The FDVA will stop at nothing to provide the earned services, benefits, and support you deserve. Reach out to FDVA today. Our mission is you. Welcome home. Welcome back. Uh, Linda, tell us a little bit about your passions. I know you grew up in a military family and then of course you've served in uniform as well. Uh, how has the Ford firm served veterans? What are some stories that you can share with us or some successes? Absolutely. So part of what we do is work with a lot of nonprofits, including the Firewatch, I'm proud to say. Um, and that's how I met Nick. We, we supported him and helped him get set up and started as a, a nonprofit, and we make sure to give back in our community. So we're, we're all a bunch of volunteers and we go out and do things in the community, mm -hmm. but we really want to be available to our veterans who might need help with their taxes. Maybe they're moving to a new location or they're retiring and their tax situation is changing. So I would encourage any veteran to seek out help mm -hmm. um, from professionals <laughs> yeah. to make sure that, that they're getting the support they need and they're doing their taxes correctly. Absolutely. And that's such a big skill set that that is unmet for so many. And someone 
who is a veteran maybe starting their own business or they're, they're chasing their own dream could really use some of that administrative support. And uh, that is definitely something that I uh, envy from those who are able to do that skill set. Um, so uh, we really do appreciate uh, just how you're able to provide that service. I know you're servicing a lot of nonprofits. So can you tell us a little bit more about that? Absolutely. So we, we have probably 80% of our business is working with different nonprofits uh, across the board. You know, um, no particular particular industry or makeup within the nonprofit sector, but we help them with everything from bookkeeping and financial analysis, outsource CFO services, or their audits that they're required to have. So making sure they have the financial statements and the support that they need to carry out their mission. Excellent. Is this something that you did while you served in the military? How did you transition to CPA work? So it's not, I went in the military to get my education. Mm -hmm. um, my mother wouldn't sign the student loans. She said she didn't want me to carry that kind of debt into life. Mm -hmm. So I went into the military. My father was in the Air Force, so I said, why not? Let's mm -hmm. do this. And I, I served full time and was a full time student and got my education in accounting, which is what I wanted to do. I'm, I'm absolutely a nerd <laughs> and love it. But then I wanted to carry that on and give back to the community. So this was a way, great way for me to give back to that nonprofit community in an effective, real way. And there's nothing better when someone comes into your office and says, oh, I feel so much better. You know, you can see the weight just come off of their shoulders. Absolutely. Well, where do you hope to see the Ford firm in the future, maybe in the next couple of years? I'd love to see us be even more involved with veteran small businesses, making sure that other veterans can be successful in what they're doing, giving them that administrative support like you talked about, and making sure that they have the connections and resources they need to be successful. You know, we're used to lots of structure in the military. You do this at this time on this day and you repeat it however often you're told to repeat it. Mm -hmm. The civilian world's not like that. Yeah. So they need that support and I want to be that trusted advisor to help them. Absolutely. When we talk about suicide prevention, especially as it relates to veterans, uh, we know that there's generally not just one thing that they're wrestling with or one challenge that they're trying to navigate. So I could really see a huge benefit in providing this kind of support for maybe a veteran who is starting uh, out and chasing their dream or starting a, a nonprofit business or something to that effect to really just help relieve that stress. Um, so tell us a little bit about the process that you went through to become a watchstander. You know, I was I was one of the early watch standers. Mm -hmm. So we got on and did the the thirty minute training and went through it. It's very easy to do, very user friendly. And then when Nick talked about being a veteran safe place, I said, "Gosh, this is so important mm -hmm. to me." So I encouraged all of my staff to do it. I didn't make it mandatory, um, but I encouraged them all to do it, and they all embraced it very much. Mm -hmm. And we've all got our our wristbands that we've got That's and our good. emergency cards yeah. to call if someone comes in and has an issue. But I tend to be that kind of fixer person generally. So when people come in, I want to make sure that they feel better. I minored in psychology, which you would think is a little weird with accounting, but it actually comes in very useful sure. because people do need to, to shed some of the burdens and the stress of what they're bringing into the office. Absolutely. Thank you again for joining us today. And for more information on the Firewatch, you can go to thefirewatch.org and there you will be able to find the Watch Standard training videos and be able to go through that program. And uh, we really can do more together in providing support for our veterans and uh, especially identifying veterans who might be in crisis and to get them the help that they need. So thank you again and have a great one.